In this lesson, you will learn how to identify solutions to linear equations. Equations can have different numbers of solutions. You can have one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. And let me show you this visually to help you understand. For example, if I had a system of equations and I graphed it here in graph 1, I graph line m in blue and line n in red, and these two lines intersect at a single point. If the lines intersect at one point, it means there is one solution. Now let's look at the second example. Again, you have two lines from a system of equations. You have line A in red and line blue. These two lines are parallel and they will never intersect. If the lines never intersect, there is no solution. And in the third instance, there are two lines, one in red and one in blue, and as you can see, these two lines entirely overlap, which means they are the same line and they will share all of the same points, which means that there are infinitely many solutions, or all solutions. Okay, now let's practice this for ourselves. Let's solve the equation x plus 4 minus 6 equals 6 minus 5x minus 2. You can think about it this way. You're trying to find for, for x which value of x will satisfy both sides of the equation. So to do this, begin by combining like terms on both sides of the equation so that we can simplify this. Here you have x and you have negative 6x, so you're going to subtract. x minus 6x is negative 5x, and you're left with the constant on the left side. Here your like terms are two constants. You have 6 minus 2, which will give you 4. So the right side you're going to have negative 5x plus 4. And as you see here, the right side equals the left side. Now let's just simplify even further just to get down to variables. Subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. When you do that, you're left with negative 5x on the left and negative 5x on the right. And you can simplify this even further still by dividing both sides by negative 5. After you do that, you get down to x equals x. Now let's see this graphically. Here's the graph that represents the problem we just solved. As you can see, there are two lines here. One is in red and the other is in blue, and they are completely aligned with one another, or they are the same line. Well, why does this happen? Look at this step right here. You can rewrite both sides of this equation as two separate equations. So you can rewrite it as y equals negative 5x plus 4. That's one equation. And the second equation would be y equals negative 5x plus 4. And then when you go to graph that, you get the same line, right? So if it's y equals negative 5x plus 4, it has a y-intercept of 4 and the slope of negative 5. Both of these lines are the same, which means what for the solution? it means there are infinitely many solutions, or all solutions. You can also think about this numerically. When you simplify it all the way down to x equals x, you know that you can pick any value of x and the left side will equal the right side. For example, let's say I pick x equals 1. Well, then the left side would equal 1 because x equals x. If I picked 572, the left side and the right side would be equal, 572. So you have all solutions. Let's try another problem. Here's another equation. Negative 8x plus 6 plus 9x equals negative 9 plus x. To find what type of solution this uh, system of equations will have, begin by simplifying the left side. So you have negative 8x plus 9x, which leaves you with x plus 6 on the left. And there are no like terms on the right, so this stays the same. Now what you can do is subtract 6 from both sides to bring the constant terms to the right side. So you're left with x equals negative 15 plus x. And you can simplify this even further by subtracting x from both sides of the equation, and you get 0 equals negative 15. And you know that this right here is a false statement. It's not true. 0 does not equal negative 15. And what this means is that there will be no solution to this equation. Now let's see what this looks like graphically. Here on the graph you have two parallel lines, and you know that parallel lines never intersect, so again the graph verifies that there is no solution. If you're wondering how we got these lines, y equals x plus 6 and y equals x minus 9, they come from this step right here. 
you can rewrite, rewrite the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation as two separate equations. So you would get y equals x plus 6 on the left, and then y equals negative 9 plus x, or rewrite this to y equals x minus 9. And that's how you get the two equations that you're going to graph. And as you see, you solved it numerically to find out that there was no solution because you got a false equality here. And then graphically, you confirmed this by seeing that the lines are parallel. Let's try one more problem together. Here you have 2x minus 5 equals 3 times parentheses 1 minus 2x. Again, you're trying to find the value of x that will satisfy both sides of the equation. Begin by simplifying the right side. And you see that you have a factor in front of the parentheses, which means you're going to use the distributive property. So 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times negative 2x is negative 6x, and that's how the right side simplifies. And the left side stays the same. Now, further simplify by adding 6x to both sides to bring the x variables to the left side of the equation. When you add 6x to both sides, you get 8x on the left, minus 5 equals 3 on the right. Now, bring the constant terms to one side of the equation by adding 5 to both sides. So when you add 5 to both sides, you get 8x equals 8. And the last step would be to isolate the x variable by dividing both sides of the equation by 8. So when you do that, you get x equals 1. So now you know that there is a single solution. There is one solution to this equation. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at this step, and we're going to write two separate linear equations as we've done in the past. So the first equation from the left side is y equals 2x minus 5. And the equation from the right side is y equals 3 minus 6x. And you can rearrange this as y equals negative 6x plus 3. And let's see these two lines on a graph. And again, we, we got down numerically or algebraically. We solved that there was one solution. So what we're looking for is two lines that intersect at one point, right? One solution, one intersection. Let's take a look. And here's our graph. And notice we have the equations y equals negative 6x plus 3, which is right here. And we have the equation y equals 2x minus 5, which is right here. Again, the other thing to notice is you do have a single intersection point. And that means you have one solution for the system of equations. The other interesting thing is that if you look at where x equals 1, that is where the intersection happens at x equals 1. You can double check to make sure that x equals 1 is correct. You can see it on the graph, but if you don't graph it, the way to check it is to substitute x equals 1 into the original equation. So if you have 2x minus 5 equals 3 times 1 minus 2x, Subtract in the value of 1 any time that the variable x appears. So here it becomes 2 times 1 minus 5 equals 3 times 1 minus 2 times 1 over here on the right side. Now simplify. On the left, 2 times 1 is 2 minus 5. And then you get you have to use the distributive property. So, oh, actually, let's simplify the parentheses first. Sorry. 3 times 1 minus 2 times 1, and 2 times 1 is 2, so 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. Now simplify the left by subtracting. 2 minus 5 is negative 3, and 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So you get a true equality, which means your solution is correct. In this lesson, you've learned how to identify solutions to equations. You've learned how to do it numerically or algebraically, and by graphing. Thanks for watching.